my views on dating are pretty different from what they were a couple months ago and they might become completely and drastically different in another couple of months so let's keep that in mind hello everybody how are you all doing today finally i'm ready to make this video about my dating experience here in japan as a foreign woman in uh, their 30s and more specifically uh, my experience with dating in tokyo because that's where i live now as a lot of you may already know from following me on social media and watching my vlogmas videos i was in a relationship up until recently so i learned a few things through that experience and obviously prior to that relationship and after that relationship i have been on a few dates as well since living in japan now i am no expert in dating at all in fact i i would actually go as far uh, as to say that i don't really enjoy the dating process as i've mentioned i'm in my 30s now so it's all starting to become a little bit repetitive but i'm here to talk to you about what i've learned up until now and share my experience in general this is not a how-to video in the slightest but if there are some tips that you can take away as to not make some of the same mistakes i did then i will be glad to have helped someone so quickly about me if you don't know anything about me i am female i am caucasian presenting i'm straight and i am in my 30s why do i keep repeating my age because age is actually an important factor here in japan not as bad as it used to be mind you but if you are a woman unmarried over the age of 27 and sometimes over the age of 25 you are considered spoiled goods i've never been called a christmas cake to my face by anyone here actually the only times that i have been called a christmas cake are by white guys on the internet and from talking to actual japanese people about this concept they find it outdated and ridiculous but having said that and regardless of what i've heard from the people around me it is a factor and there is a sense of urgency to get married before the grand age of 30. anyway i personally haven't felt discriminated against uh, because of my age but i've definitely felt a little more how can I say? Marriage focused uh, when it comes to dating, especially because of how Japanese dating apps are set up. But I will get back to that one. First, I wanted to talk about how it's like to date as a foreigner in Japan, aka dating men from a completely different cultural background than mine. That was the thing that I was the most concerned about when I started dipping my toe into the dating pool here in Japan. Are we going to be able to understand each other on different levels? Am I going to come off as rude or offensive, too direct, coming on too strong as a westerner? How do we adapt to each other? I'm living in Japan so do I have to adapt more to Japanese standards or because he is going to be dating a foreign person, does he have to change his expectations? Like where, where do we meet? And of course the fact that I have social anxiety it doesn't help so prior to moving here i did hang out with a few japanese guys some that i met over some travels and some just living in belgium so it's not like i was going completely blind i knew some of the things i was supposed to look out for and i really wanted to do things right uh, from the start whatever that meant but mostly i didn't want to attract any of the infamous gaijin hunters so japanese people who only want to date you because you're a foreigner or only want to hook up with you because they think going for a drink with a foreigner will easily lead to sex so if you're looking for a fling or something casual you're gonna have an awesome time because even though hookup culture here in japan is kind of hush hush or unspoken it is very much present same as in any other country so if you're looking to hook up you will definitely find people who are more than willing to accommodate you those kind of people you can easily find on tinder or they will not hesitate to call out to you on the street i've usually only seen men do that like the nampa the calling the cat calling on the street uh, but i'm sure it goes both ways but if you're looking to date seriously here are some things to look out for again these are just from personal experience 
you should trust your gut, go with your instincts, but please keep these in mind. First of all, and this one seems pretty obvious, if they want to hang out at their place on the first date or on the the first few dates, it's probably because they're looking to hook up. Secondly, if they want to meet very fast and very spontaneously after matching on a dating app or meeting in the street, it's usually kind of a booty call situation. Again, that's from my own experience. Maybe they're just very enthusiastic and want to meet, but I would keep this in the back of your mind. So this one is pretty 50-50. Evening dates. Now, keep in mind, a lot of Japanese workers work long hours, late until the night, and sometimes an evening date is the only available option. But I would personally try to ask about having like a lunch date on a weekend, see if they're actually open to that possibility. It isn't always possible, and in my case, I've had some very civil, polite, gentlemanly uh, evening dates, and I've had some evening dates where the guy just clearly wants to get me drunk and in his bed. So pretty 50-50, but another thing to keep in mind. Now here is the biggest tell in my opinion i use it to this day and it has not failed me a single time so for me a hundred percent success rate sorry about the noise in the hallway shared house life this red flag is that if they are being touchy with you on the first date they are not seriously considering you for a relationship and i'm talking about something as little as touching your your arm your shoulder the, the, your back they're probably not looking at you as someone that they would seriously want to date probably like a hookup or a situationship friends with benefits you know something like that of course i could be wrong but it, as i've mentioned it has not failed me a single time like oh they just happened to touch my shoulder when he excused himself to go to the bathroom is probably completely innocent um no it wasn't uh every time I, I think like the touching action is a forgivable offense it's always been troublesome right afterwards so yeah first date japanese man no touch i always have my guard up as soon as it happens and i'm ready to just leave the date as soon as other red flags show up so yeah you know i keep repeating again from personal experience but keep that in mind but yeah <laughs> trust your gut go with your instinct if you feel like it's completely innocent maybe it is i would be on high alert if your date is being touchy with you um on the first time that you guys are meeting going out going for drinks together now let's talk about dating apps in japan i've only actually been on a few dates with people that i've met like on the street and usually those never end up really well and since these days i'm just so busy i rely on apps when it comes to meeting new people so i was already using bumble prior to moving to japan and when i moved here i just continued using it because i was already in the habit of doing the swipey thing weekly and just talking to people i think most people watching know what bumble is it's not a japanese dating app it's a step above tinder you swipe left you swipe right if you have a match the woman has to message first and when i moved here the borders were closed to tourists so most of the guys on that app were japanese but now since the borders are open i feel like it's 80 percent tourists looking to have fun while they're here so i'm not really using bumble anymore these days uh but that is where i met my now ex-boyfriend um so i can't disregard the app completely because it did work once <laughs> for me but these days i'm using a japanese dating app called pairs i think it's one of the more popular ones in Japan, like one of the more serious ones, uh, there are like so many, uh, some more like targeted towards young people, towards like college students, etc. But I only know about Paris so far when it comes to Japanese dating apps, so that I'm just gonna stick to what I know and talk about pairs. Man, Japanese dating apps are something else, completely different to the dating apps we have in the in the West. Remember how I said that I had become a little more marriage driven since coming to japan that is because of dating apps like these it seems that they have been catered for people who are looking for something 
serious which is good because it does weed out some of the more casual people not all of them mind you but another thing that does help with the weeding is that uh, dating apps in japan such as pairs work on a subscription system uh, for men men are allowed to register create a profile i think maybe look at other people's profiles but they have to pay a monthly fee i think to start messaging and liking other people i think that's how it works pay to start messaging pretty much which does help with this false sense of security thinking like oh this guy is paying to find a partner so they must be serious right they must be actively looking and staying open-minded mm, yes and no i still think that there will be all different kinds of people on an app regardless whether you pay for it or not so i would not completely let my guard down just yet now what makes japanese dating apps so different from what we have in the west is the amount of bloody detail that you you can input on your profile and that you're expected to add to your profile i mean no joke it took me at least an hour to set up my own profile and yes the fact that the app is completely in, in japanese doesn't help but seriously here are some things that you might find on a japanese dating profile again i only have access to men's dating profiles uh, so you will find usually a nickname i've rarely seen anyone use their actual name on their dating profiles you'll have their age which sibling they are like firstborn son middleborn uh, etc the blood type spoken languages where you're currently living and where you're from graduation level occupation salary yeah that one really surprised me at first you can choose like the bracket in which your salary uh year i think it's yearly yearly salary falls into and at first i didn't understand how it could be so important especially for men to have this salary up it does seem a little like outdated but after being on the app for a little while when i see a guy's profile where he hasn't put the salary info it does make you wonder like huh what is he hiding does is he embarrassed of his salary does he have a bad relationship with money is he extremely rich and doesn't want to att attract the wrong kind of people you know so you kind of get used to these things that are just completely culturally different from what you're used to also height body type then you have uh, marital status if you've been divorced or widowed single uh if you have kids intentions for marriage whether or not you're open to getting married if you're only if you meet the right person or if you're really wanting to get married within the next two to three years or um, like immediately get married like as soon as possible same with your intentions for kids if you want some or not intentions for housework that one made me laugh a little bit because it, it is again a little bit outdated like whether or not you're gonna be splitting the housework or whether or not you're expecting your partner to do most of it uh, if you want to participate as much as possible that kind of thing how soon do you want to meet after matching not sure i really get that one like immediately meet meet after talking kind of thing intention for paying a date it does seem a little odd you can choose like whether you're expecting to split the bill 50 50 or like one person pays more the other less or if the person really wants to handle everything by themselves it does take up some of the pressure during the date though like during the odd like should i reach for my wallet uh are we gonna like fight over the bill kind of thing so actually I, i've learned to really appreciate when they put that information on their profile then they have personality traits their living situation whether they how much they drink if they smoke or not and then you can uh choose at the top of your profile like some of the things that like you really prioritize out of everything out of that list like if you really want to get married like as soon as possible you can put it high up on your profile page um me personally i have like that i don't want to date a smoker you can look at what else can you put like uh, the personality traits that you're looking for in another person that kind of thing and then there's this whole page where you can like scroll through and tick things that you like such like you know kinds of foods anime uh traveling probably anything that you can think of there will be like a community page for it that you can just join and that way the other person can see the kinds of things that you enjoy doing and then there's like it helps with the compatibility percentage which 
I don't really get because sometimes you meet someone and you have like this particular percentage compatibility percentage but then it just it just keeps changing and fluctuate fluctuating with that person so I mean I don't really I don't really trust that but hey at least you know if you have things in common with that person so pretty detailed right and actually the only thing that isn't detailed uh, on that dating profile are the photos I mean you can you can input things on your profile such as your your salary and your intentions for housework but you don't give out your name and you use blurry photos which I found pretty interesting like the the definition of privacy is very is very different here don't be surprised if all you get is a photo of that person wearing a mask a blurry photo a photo where they've put a sticker over half of their face or like photos of their pets foods like places they've traveled whereas in the west you get like selfies like different angles different lighting different situations like different parts like of, of your body and yeah all, all you get here is a uh, most of the time a blurry photo and uh luckily luckily dating apps like pairs have like id verification so the chances of being completely catfished are very low but there is a chance that that person will have uploaded a photo of themselves blurry photo of themselves when they're really young so you can show up to the date and be like okay where's the guy is that him is that him that's not him oh my god that's him and it's, he's like <laughs> probably five or more years older than when the photo had been taken so yeah it's definitely felt more like um almost going on a blind date again like things i've only seen in movies like complete going in completely blind it's not the same obviously like you have a general idea of what they look like but also no not completely not 100 percent. you go in in a little blind when you're meeting with your online matches i haven't been successful with that app yet i do get a lot of matches which is flattering but when you take like your own criteria into account like for me i really want to be with someone who's taller than me <laughs> it does like it does uh reduce your amount of matches by a lot it's not as easy as it seems you may get like a whole bunch of matches but then when you look for things that are actually valid matches for yourself the number is much smaller than expected so i think that's it for dating apps i personally have never really enjoyed them even back in belgium it does feel a little forced but like because it it did work that one time for me i am a little more optimistic about them but if i'm being completely completely honest i would much prefer meeting someone naturally i don't know if that's even a possibility in this day and age anymore <laughs> and everyone is so busy including myself but yeah we'll we'll see what happens we'll see if it works if it doesn't work uh, i enjoy my own company so it's all fun now to my actual dating and relationship experience. I won't get into detail about my relationship from last year. It's very personal and private, obviously, for both of us. But there are some points that I wanted to go over that might give you some insight about the potential uh, bumps and roadblocks when it comes to intercultural dating. First of all, the whole cultural difference Thing seemed huge to me at first when I when I first arrived to Japan I thought I was gonna mess up do something unflattering uh, yeah again with the social anxiety that has calmed way down by now but I remember back then that the fear of not being able to do well uh, while dating took up so much space in the relationship I didn't have my usual points of reference when it came to reading these men so I was always questioning like is that action, is their behavior a result of a cultural difference or is it a personality thing? so if my partner doesn't reply to a text for a couple of days is it Japanese texting culture or is it a them thing? you know, that kind of thing and as someone who has a little bit of an anxious attachment style that's something that I really struggled with and I ended up forgiving things that I would normally 
never forgive just because of the odd chance that it might be a cultural difference that I need to learn to accept when in fact that particular behavior action was them being a complete asshole. This kind of thing I think is something that I personally am going to be struggling with uh, probably for another couple of years until I've interacted with a whole wide range of different Japanese people and learn to understand and navigate like the dating and um, interaction etiquette. And I'm curious whether that's something that's like particular to me or if that's something that other foreigners have experienced when getting into a relationship with a Japanese person or someone from a completely different cultural background. One of the barriers these days that I'm experiencing is obviously the language barrier. It is difficult and it does cause some conflict, but it's not impossible to get over. I mean, these days I'm going through this phase where I'm actually terrified to speak any amount of Japanese with native speakers. Like, I don't know what's going on with me, but still I have managed to navigate and go on dates with people who mostly only speak Japanese and very little English and in my experience it's always gone well because if you're willing to put in the effort to try and speak Japanese even terrible horrible Japanese they are patient and waiting for you to finish your sentence and find your words and you can use your translation app for some things usually they'll know some amount of English to varying degrees so I would take the opportunity and even if the date doesn't go well you can practice your Japanese meet new people, make new friends so don't let the fear of the language barrier stop you fun fact, when I arrived here and I started going on dates I was hoping to find a Japanese boyfriend partly because I thought that it would really help me improve my Japanese Japanese levels, but my boyfriend at the time uh, ha spoke like really really good English and out of convenience we always like went back to speaking English so that was a missed opportunity. Okay, I want to talk about a few things that I've personally struggled with uh, in relationships since living in Japan and one of the things is the fact that some, not all, some Japanese people take a lot of time to respond back to a text. Uh, now, turns out my ex was a little bit more on the extreme side of things when it comes to not texting back, but sometimes it's better not to expect a text back um, until the end of the day or maybe even a day or two after. Uh, and that can be very surprising and even upsetting if you're you're from a culture like in the West where it's considered to be a little bit rude and ghost-like to not text back within the next couple of hours or like as soon as possible. So in order to navigate that, I would try and communicate your texting habits and expectations to your potential new partner, not like force your expectations onto that person but be like hey i'm used to um getting a text back within the next three hours and they can be like oh i understand but at my job i'm not allowed to use my phone at all but i'll make sure to send you a text when i wake up and a text when i get home from work and then we can talk and then we can jump on a call you know like communication it's it's always about communication in the end but yeah don't be surprised if maybe at first the person you're dating or maybe even Japanese friends, colleagues, they might not get back to you for, for a little while. Another thing that was actually really hard for me is the fact that uh, Japanese couples, at least at first, don't meet up as often as you think for a new couple. Um, usually they will meet once a week at weekends, especially if the relationship is new. Again, for me, I was in a more extreme case. Why? Um, but yeah, if, if I like someone, like if I really am into the person that I'm dating, I want to see them all the time. So the once a week thing was a little was a little rough for me to comprehend at first. Like I, I was wondering why that person didn't want to see me as often as I wanted. I was it made me think like maybe they're not that into me, but it's a cultural difference. Again with the like is it a personal trait or is it a cultural trait? Like 
mm, figuring that one out yeah this is usually due to the fact that most japanese people are very busy during the week time and only get time off during the weekend again that's not for everyone but it's the case for a lot of people here especially in tokyo weekends are usually days off for office workers and so on so yeah the dating on the weekend is actually a pretty normal and standard thing and if you're going for a walk on the weekend you'll usually see a lot of couples and families going out all together so yeah i can't navigate that it's all about communication you should talk about your expectations and understand where the other person is coming from and maybe at first it'll only be once a week and if your relationship is heading into the right direction and becoming more like deep and serious of course after like really well organized weekend dates you can have like more casual laid back home dates like go for a meal after work or have like a sleepover after work and then you go both go to your work places the next day communicate with your potential partner and see what each of you are open to in my case the communication wasn't there and there was never any room to compromise so learn from my lessons basically is what i'm trying to say Ooh, there's something that I do want to talk about, something that I really like, but um, I don't know much about it because I've never experienced it myself and it's the fact that um, after a couple of dates, if everything is going well, one of the two people, usually the guy, let's face it, will officially ask the other to be their um, boyfriend or girlfriend. And I guess it's, it is kind of the same in some in some way as in the west where uh, you'll decide that you want to be an official or exclusive couple type of thing but the way that it's done here in japan it's usually within the first five dates i would say um there will be like a more official demand like it's actually called confession like kokohaku so it is like a, a formal way of asking the other to become uh their partner like you go from dating to being in a relationship and I find that really cute and uh, yeah like I said I've yet to experience that myself but uh, yeah, it's freaking adorable I really like that that aspect of dating let's talk about PDA remember how I said that being touchy on a first date is usually a red flag that's because PDA isn't a huge thing here in Japan. It's changed a lot over the years and with the influence of like American movies and stuff but usually you will not see Japanese people hugging or kissing especially in public. So unless you are officially in a couple with someone like after the confession kokohaku, only then will you be holding hands and kissing your partner. Which is why if your date is touching you before the confession it's usually a sign that they're not thinking about dating you seriously. They're not thinking about becoming uh, an official couple in the future. I personally was really happy that my partner was okay with holding hands in public because for some people even that is too much PDA and since one of my higher ranking love languages is, uh, is physical touch I was so happy that I got to hold hands with my boyfriend when walking down the streets of Tokyo but yeah keep that in mind you probably won't see like people making out in public so all in all it depends on the person you're dating but don't get offended if your partner doesn't want to kiss you in public it's not a you thing it's a cultural thing finally i want to talk about the image that i had of japanese men prior to moving to japan versus the one that i have now the different adjectives i've heard uh to describe a japanese man would be Maybe a little shy, clumsy when it comes to relationships, a little bit cold, maybe aloof. Uh, now, like you cannot define like the entire male population of a country like with just a few adjectives. And I've met like so many kind different kinds of people with different kinds of personalities, some like more outspoken, some more quiet. But from my personal experience and something that I've really struggled with uh, in my relationship is that there's a distance that is difficult to close, uh, that was difficult to close between me and my partner. I found it hard to feel like I'm truly accepted and part of that person's life. Like kind of like I'm being held at arm's length. So maybe aloof 
is the the description that I would still use to this day. Uh, but then again, it might it might be a me thing, or it might be something that is only applicable to my past relationship but I, yeah i definitely feel like there are la layers to a person and there's like this inner inner layer this inner circle that i've never been able to access uh if that makes sense i don't want to be the one who's trying to define a whole culture that doesn't belong to me and be like this is how a works and this is how c works but there is a thing in japan like the face that you show to the people who are a part of the outer circle and the face that you show to people who are part of the inner circle and I still wonder to this day, like, have I ever made it into a person's inner circle? Again, might just be a me thing, might be just an impression that I had from this one ex experience from the relationship I had last year that doesn't at all mean that I think that Japanese people lack uh, warmth and friendliness like, not in the slightest, quite the opposite actually but there is still, like to me, the sense that there is this, like, this inner layer that is difficult to access. Again, I would be more than happy to hear other people's experience on the matter. So I can compare it to mine. So regardless of the good experiences and the bad experiences when it comes to dating Japanese men, in the end, it, it, it is just the same as with any other country you'll you'll get some weird people you get some gentlemen you get some people who are looking for a serious relationship and you'll have people who are just looking for a fling in the end it's all about compatibility and communication finding the right match navigating roadblocks and uh obviously uh cultural differences versus personality traits type of thing no clue who i'll end up with or if i'll even end up with anybody but it has been an interesting uh experience to say the least so if you're in japan planning to come to japan long term short term and you want to get dating a try i mean i can only encourage it it's an experience you might meet some like some really nice people along the way you might learn some things about the culture that you cannot learn about in in textbooks and guidebooks discover new places you might make uh lifelong connections even on a friendly level so i would say go for it just maybe keep some of the things that i mentioned previously in mind just to make the uh, navigating of the waters a little more pleasant and easy Thank you for watching, I hope that you learned a thing or two. I would be very interested to know about your own experiences when it comes to dating and relationships in Japan or dating and relationships interculturally uh, in general. Just leave it all in the comments, just please, because this could be a sensitive issue. Remember to be kind, polite, and open-minded. If you have any questions for me personally, feel free to leave it in the comments or if you want to reach out, my DMs are open on Instagram. So, hope you're doing well. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll work you out. See you soon, bye! Welcome to the end screen. Thank you for watching. Please check out all my other links. There is a new link in there. I thought I should mention it. I have started a free OnlyFans account because I enjoy modeling and I enjoy doing some modeling that sometimes doesn't really have a place on Instagram that is more for a particular kind of public. So if you are that particular kind of public, just I'll see you there, right? <laughs> Thank you as always to my patrons, you guys, you guys are my rocks, you're keeping me afloat, you're giving me motivation to keep going and fighting and try and accomplish my dreams of being an artist and oh my god, keep living in Japan, why is it so hard? Ah, but I'm so thankful for you guys and uh, I can't, I can't express my gratitude. So to everyone still watching to this point, I'll word you all even more. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.